<laughs> Praise God. Amen. It's time to begin our service this morning. Are we excited to be here this morning? Amen. It is a privilege to be in the Lord's house this morning. Let's all stand this morning. And let's thank the Lord God this morning for bringing us here safely this morning to his house. Dear Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning, God, as we lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. God, that you brought us to your house this morning. God, safely to worship your true and holy name this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've been accomplishing in our hearts, in our lives this week. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due you. In Jesus' name, let this church say amen. Amen. Let's remain standing this morning and turn to page 236. We're going to sing that song, Are You Washed in the Blood? Page 236, Are You Washed in the Blood? Well, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing part? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the... Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Verse 2, are you walking? Are you walking? daily by the Savior's side. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Verse 3, when the bridegroom the bridegroom cometh with your robe be white you and washed in the blood of the will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride are you washed in the blood of all right are you washed are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the land are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the first four lay aside Lay aside those garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood. There's a fountain, a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed the blood. All right, come on now. Are you washed? Come on, can we hear you? The blood and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Verse 4, one more time. Lay aside those garments that stain with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Come on now. Are you washed in the blood and the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Thank you, Jesus. Your garments spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in one more time, the chorus. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? If you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, won't you worship Him this morning? Thank Him this morning for giving His life on Calvary's cross for you and I. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. God, for all that you've accomplished, God, there on Calvary's Hill. Lord, for dying for each one of us this morning, God. Lord, for giving us life and that more abundantly. Thank you, Jesus, for one more opportunity, Lord, to lift up our hearts and our lives unto you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. Are you washing the blood? Amen. Are you washing the blood this morning? Yeah. Amen. We're here this morning to give praise to Jesus Christ. Yes. For all that he's accomplished in our hearts and our lives and what he's still accomplishing in our lives this morning. Yes. Amen. This morning, we got out this morning. Uh, we had a lot of calls this morning. Folks like, oh, Pastor won't be able to make it. Pastor won't be able to make it. And so, well, praise the Lord. 
Let's go ahead and still have church. Amen. But there, uh, tonight, tonight, we're going to go ahead and can- we're going to cancel tonight's service because of the weather tonight. Um, it's slip- slippery, it's kind of, not slushy, but uh, um, freezing rain out there. And so uh, while I was driving here, I ain't going to lie, I almost uh, slipped off the road there oh, no. in that little, that little Cooper I got. Oh. But praise God. I mean, I'm, I, I'm saying this for my own, um, uh, not only for my own sake, but for your sake also. Because if, uh, if I'm not going to drive in that, I don't want you to drive in that. So uh, there will not be a s- Sunday evening service here tonight. Amen? Amen. Come on, preacher. I mean, what's, what's wrong with a little ice and, and uh, slippery and sliding? Well, I just want to be safe. Amen. Also, what's that other announcement the other day, bro? Home Bible studies. We are conducting home Bible studies at your convenience, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, call and schedule yours today. Um, we are going to get back with someone that's sitting in the service t- this morning about a Bible study in their building. Um, he said, come on, preacher. Don't push me. No, I'm not pushing them, but um, if, you, if you desire a home Bible study, you know anyone um, that desire a home Bible study, uh, just share it with them that we'll come to their home and we will teach the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They don't want to come to church. They want to find out what we're all about. Um, just say, hey, that, that, that church there, come to your house and, and teach a Bible study. Amen. 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 We have uh, uh, conducted Bible studies in, um, in folks' houses that are sitting in this church service this morning. Amen. 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 And they have invited their friends, their families to their house. So if you desire that, um, just get back with us at that number, 608-622-1920. Thanks, Pastor. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't get that number off quick enough. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. What's the next one? Pray for your church. Yeah. Pray for your church. Um, we are uh, actively looking for another venue to have a uh, church services in. So pray for us. Pray for, um, um, you know, it's more, uh, it's more than two eyes here. If you see a place out there that you think that can um, fit all of us in, and more. Amen. I mean, if you uh, remember the place that we were in on Grand Canyon Drive, it was pretty small over there. Mm-hmm. One person came to church at one time and they said, Preacher, you're a great preacher, but this church you have here is pitiful. Because <laughs> it, was, it was about half the size. It was about half the size. And so we kind of doubled the size. Now uh, we need to kind of double this size. So well, what we double this size. Want to kind of shrink everybody in there? Um, we've uh, found out that um, once you get something bigger, it'll fill up. God, He knows how to uh, draw people to His His house, and it's not it's not us. It's not um, anything that uh, we've done, but it's the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord draws men and women um, to His house. We're all here because God has drew, drew us here. I'm here because God drawed me here to His house. You know. Um, uh, over 30 some years ago, Ooh, yeah. he called me out from darkness and um, placed me into his marvelous light. Amen. So if you see a place out there, if you think, hey, Pastor, I saw this place that was sitting there. It's empty. Call us. We'll go check it out and see um, see if we can um, pursue it. Amen. Also, church Christmas party. Now, that's what I'm talking about, preacher. I'm kind of glad you got to that. <laughs> church Christmas party. Where it's going to be at this church Saturday, December 18th. Um, at 6 p.m. Mm-hmm. Now, see, I said Saturday at 6 p.m. Don't be coming up here any this Saturday. <laughs> Look at the date now. December 18th. Pastor, oh, they called my phone. Pastor, oh, it was Christmas party today? Uh, no, it was on the 18th. So, uh, December 18th at 6 p.m. Sister Walsh, you want to say anything good about that? Amen. Amen. And this will not be a Thanksgiving dinner. Right. <laughs> so don't come in and think like oh, it's going to be some big food here. Or whatever. Oh, where's the turkey at? Where's the chicken? Oh, right, Pastor, you ain't got no fried chicken? No. No, no. 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 Maybe some wingettes, but um, not, no. Um. So we want to thank um, the committee. Amen. Committee for putting this together. Amen. Yes. Sister Walsh, Sister Sampson, and um, Sister Tiffany. Amen. 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 No, when I was in high school, there was these three guys. They was called 
the committee. Mm-hmm. And then they would go around um, uh, to the uh, basketball games and football games, and they, they, they was dressed to the T. And they always had these uh, after-party things that they would give out to everybody. It was called a committee. So what's your committee? Hey, we just have three young ladies here putting it all together. Amen? Amen. 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 If you would like to be on the committee, get with us. Amen. Get with Sister Walls. He said, well, I'm pretty sure I don't have anything to uh, uh, add. Yes, you do. Everyone has something to add. Amen. 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 Everyone has a voice here. Yeah. Amen. It's quiet out there. <laughs> yeah. Do I have any more announcements? Uh, no, just pray for your church. Pray for Sister Walls and I. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share this. this. There was a death in our family, so uh, pray for us. Pray for us. My wife's uh, sister's uh, daughter passed um, just Friday. So um, pray for yes. pray for us. Yes, Amen. What else? Do I have anything else? Pray for those that aren't here. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, when one person is missing, mm-hmm. it, it affects everyone. When one person is missing that, um, that does things in the church, it affects the church. Mm-hmm. But when two people are missing, mm-hmm. it's like... Uh, but when three people are missing, you know, we we was getting calls all this morning. Bring Pastor, I won't be and text click, 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 won't be there. Click, click, click. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on, Lord? But this is not a show, but it must go on. Amen. It must go on. We are thankful that the Lord um we do have um, men and women that are here that are faithful that will um fill in the gap. Fill in the gap. So I'm thankful um for that. At this time going to receive an offering this morning as Brother Canaan will come and help us. Hallelujah. Thankful for Brother Canaan this morning. Amen. He still dra- travels afar off <laughs> to get to the house of God. Could you please pray, Brother? Heavenly Father, we're thankful for your many blessings. We ask that you both bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hello. Can y'all hear me? Somebody saying the mic's kind of low. I don't think I'm too uh, quiet. Maybe start talking louder. All right. This time the, the sisters are going to sing a special song as unto the Lord. Amen. This morning. How great is our God this morning? If he's good, I want y'all to get on in and worship with us. And we know he's good. Hallelujah. Uh, the splendor of a king. Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, hallelujah, here we go, here we go. He wraps himself in light, sing, sing. and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great, how great is our God. Come on and sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is he? How great, how great is our God. Come on and sing. 
that's due you this morning thank you Jesus Lord what you're doing Lord in our lives this morning God continue to move in a mighty way Jesus name amen and amen amen you may be seated this morning man God is great and he's worthy to be praised man if we don't praise him the Bible says the rocks will cry out I don't want no rock praising God for me for me amen he said well preacher a rock will praise God come on now Amen. It's good for all of us to be here this morning in church this morning. We braved the weather. Came out here some. Uh, uh, haven't seen in a while, but praise God. I'm thankful that each one is here this morning. Amen. We're going to be reading two verses of scripture out of the book of Colossians. In the New Testament, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 23. We won't keep you long, but we don't know how long the Lord will keep you. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And whatsoever you, you do, do it heartily as to the Lord 
and not unto men. Amen. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. And I'd like to take those two verses of scripture and, and speak for a little while this morning on a thought, excellence or good enough. Excellence or good enough. Brother Najin, could you please put a message your message this morning, please? Amen and amen. Appreciate that prayer this morning. Is there ever a time in our lives that we want to come to the Lord and offer him something that is less than the best that we can do? How could we ever consider something that we do or did for the Lord to be just good enough? Considering all that he's done for each one of us by giving his only begotten son to die for our sins to set us free from the bondage of Satan and giving us life, and he said, more abundantly by forgiving us and showing us his grace and mercy upon our lives not only once but daily, but daily would seem that good enough just don't seem appropriate. God gave us his best, his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, down the cross for us. So we would really want to come to him just any old type of way. We just don't want to come to him just any old type of way. But we have to come to him in a specific way. We all know that we can never give God enough to pay him back for what he's done for each one of us. We know that we need to give him the utmost best that we can. It's quiet in here this morning. I'm listening, preacher. Good. Well, why would we strive to only bring God the best? Hello? First of all, we need to consider what God expects from each one of us. In the Old Testament, the worshipers were required to bring material sacrifices to God, animals and food from the crops also. There were strict requirements to what kind of offerings were brought to the Lord. Nothing but the best was brought to God. The worshipers were forbidden to uh, bring inferior offerings before the Lord. There would be the temptation to give the lame sheep or the spoiled grain to God rather than really suffering or bringing a sacrifice. Kind of like a little boy who gives his sister the cupcake that he dropped on the floor. In Leviticus chapter 1 and verse 3, it says there, if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Amen. When the people of Israel brought an offering to God, it was supposed to be an excellent offering. An animal without spot, without blemish, without defect. And also, it was to bring the best of their crop. Excellent means first rate, finest, extremely good, exceptional. I'm probably going to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to say it anyway. No one wants uh, messed up service. Now, you go to a rest. <laughs> no, I ain't going to say it. Right now. I'm getting ahead of myself. In those days, animals and crops were the same as wealth. 
It was their form of money. When they brought their wealth to show their love and respect to Almighty God, it was supposed to be the best that they had. Now, I'm going to interject this in there. We all want the best that God has, don't we? I'm just, that's what I'm going to stop at right there. When bringing an offering in unto the Lord, they might have been tempted to find one of the lame animals that were among their animals. An animal that they would have to put down and present it as an offering. That way they would not be too much out. Hmm. They could have got a lamb that would not have been able to sell. They wouldn't be able to sell anyway. And say, well, this is good enough. Or they might have taken the grain from their harvest that was left over at the end of the season. The wheat that had started to spoil. The grain that the rats and the uh, rodents had started to gnaw. Some of them might have thought, it's just going to be sacrificed to God anyway. The leftovers would be just good enough. But a good enough sacrifice is not good enough when it's brought to Almighty God. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 9 and 10, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's what I'm talking about, preacher. I was just, the only thing I heard was just new wine. Just bring me the wine. That verse says to honor God with our wealth. With the first fruits of our crops. We honor God when we give him the best. In Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. It says a son honors his father and a servant his master. If I am a father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you. You, O priests, who show contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we shown contempt for your name? Here God is saying he's not being shown the respect that his son is shown to his father or servant to his master. Even the priest showed hatred for God. Now, how did they do this? In Malachi chapter 1, verse 7 through 8, went on to say, You offer polluted bread upon mine altar, and you say, Where have you polluted thee? And that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, said the Lord of hosts? Hmm. Is that in the Bible? You're reading it. That's why I'm glad we got a screen up there. When you sacrifice crippled or diseased animals, is that not wrong? Try offering them to your governor, says here. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you, says the Lord Almighty? You see, they were bringing in sacrifices that were less than excellent. They were bringing in blind, crippled, and diseased animals thinking that they were good enough. God poses a question to them. Would you bring that to your governor? In other words, would you bring that to the governor that is for your taxes? Now, we all got to pay taxes. Well, some of you, I don't know. You know, some, some people like um, Wesley Snipes, you know, he may not want to pay taxes. But if we don't pay taxes, other two things are going to happen. We're going to go to jail or we're going to go to jail. God challenges each one of us to consider if we would treat our rulers in our day the way that we treat him. You know, yeah, God is, uh, yeah, I, hey, I could just do whatever, you know. It, it, uh, but we were, we're all going to have to stand before him one day. Just uh, just recently, we, my wife, she had a niece that died. She was 39. She died of pancreatic cancer. And her mom was there by her bedside to the end. And my wife talked to her sister, and she was sharing about the things that were going on um, at the bedside. And she said that her daughter was 
She she couldn't go to sleep, but she talked all night long. She was there from one to five, six o'clock. She talked all night long. So what are you saying, preacher? Her mom said she wouldn't shut up, but she talked. She talked, and she said about the end, about the end when it was all said and done. She was like her daughter. The last thing she said, she said, "Wow, I feel different." And I shared with my wife. You know, at that time she had passed away, and I shared with my wife. I said, "You know." I said, people probably will feel different when their soul is being separated from their body. They may not feel any pain anymore. You may feel different, and that may be the last thing that you remember before you slip off into eternity. When you get older, you you think about life, how fragile it is. I'm getting a little bit older. And you think how fragile life is, how um, life is no respecter of person. I mean, the, the young die as well as the old. And I'm thankful for these years that the Lord has given me. Um, it has uh, opened my eyes and let me see that, hey, you know, I don't have too much time left. Right. The time that I have now, the time, I'm just sharing my own personal life. The time that I have now, I must uh, redeem this time wisely. Right. That's right. <coughs> redeem it wisely. In the book of Haggai, the people that returned back to Israel after the exile. They had a a lot of rebuilding to do when they got back. They had to rebuild the walls, the city, their homes, their fields. Clearly, they had not gotten around to rebuilding the temple because they had so many other things to get to first. After a while, they had, uh, had gotten everything rebuilt, but they had not gotten around to fixing God's house yet. They were willing to say that they ruined that the ruined temple was good enough for the Lord. Listen to what God says to the prophet Haggai. In Haggai chapter 1, verse 2 through 9. Says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your call, in your sealed houses in this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you or you clothe yourself, but there's none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. So he said that twice. Verse 8, go up to the mountain and bring wood. And build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. That's kind of straight, huh? Everything that the Israelites were trying to do was coming up short. Their crops were failing. They were hungry. They were cold. They were poor. They couldn't figure it out. What's going on? God said clearly that their lack of blessing was because they were not giving him their best. Hello? Verse 9 says, You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. We want God to blow upon our blessings. Why, said the Lord of hosts, because in mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. They were saying that God's ruined house was good enough. They were not doing all they could to honor the Lord. God deserves our best. Does he? Do you believe that? There is no excuse for not giving him our best. Now, if the best we all, if the best is all, If the best that we have is just a little, praise God. That's the best. Jesus praised the widow widow woman there for the pennies that she uh, put into the offering because it was the best that she had. While he condemned the riches that was put in by the Pharisees because he could have done better. Wow. If all we have is a little flock of lambs, we bring the Lord our best. Hello? If our whole crop 
is just a bushel. We give God the best part of that bushel. If we're not the best singer, we should give God the best. To sing with all of our heart. Now, I can't sing that good, but I'm going to sing. I'm going to make a joyful noise. Well, preacher, it ain't that joyful. <laughs> if the best we can offer God is a shack to worship in, we had better make that shack the best shack that it is for the Lord. There are times when good enough is good enough, but not when it comes to the Lord. To be the church that God is building, we need to be the church that pursues excellence. Hello? Not for pride's sake. Not to look uh, better than the church down the road. Not uh, to be worldly, but because we serve a God who deserves our best. He deserves our best. We want to be excellent, I put down there, in everything that we do for God for his sake. For his sake. If we're worshiping on a deserted island where no one else is there, we would still want to give God the best that we have to offer. Now, there is an added benefit to serving God with excellence. People will also notice and be drawn to excellence. And in so doing, they will be drawn to the Lord. Okay? Think about two restaurants, both of which have the exact same food at the exact same prices. So, we walk into the door of the first one and no one greets us. We look at the floor and the floor is dirty. I want to interject in there. Thank you, Brother Otto, for vacuuming this floor. Probably said, man, why you say that? Just thought about that. You make your way to the counter and there's no one there to help you right away. Finally, one of the cooks sees you and hollers for the cashier to take your order. They come to the front, take the cigarette that's hanging out the back on the side of their mouth and put it on the floor and begin to put it out. They take your order impatiently, gives you the wrong change, and does it even say thank you. Finally, the food comes and your order is wrong. The food is cold and you have to get up and get your own spoon and fork. Man, preacher. That experience was less than excellent. Then the next day, you go to another restaurant in the same chain, same food, same prices. You walk in, and people greet you with a hearty, hello, good to see you. The cashier is there waiting for you with a big smile on her face. She has a friendly attitude. She rings up your order quick and correct. You find a clean table with uh, your utensils on it. In a matter of minutes, your food is brought out with a smile. They ask if they, you need anything, and they check on you just in a few more minutes when you take that first bite. You know what I'm talking about. When you leave, they wave and say, thank you for coming. We'll see you soon. Which restaurant would you go back to? Well, preacher, I'm used to the one with the man with the, with the cigarette hanging out their mouth. No, you'll go back to the one that showed excellence. That showed excellence. Even if it meant that you had to drive out of your way, you would go to the place that showed you more excellence. People notice excellence. You know, when I was, me and Sister Walls, when we were young Christians, we used to, um, we wanted to find a church to go to. So we went to one church, I'll never forget. Went to this one church and we, um, somebody didn't invite us there. And the person that invited us wasn't even there. I said, wow, we was looking for them. Did they come to church? But anyway, we sat down. We had, the, the service was, was going on or whatever this night. And when we went in there, no one even looked at us. We sat down, we had the service, and then after the service, no one still looked at us. And we said, well, surely um, we can go talk to the pastor. So we tried to make our way to the pastor. The pastor didn't even look at us. I said, man, what kind of church is this? I thought church is supposed to be friendly. I mean, at least wave from a far off or something. <laughs> sometimes church should be kind of like family. Yeah. Now, you know, sometimes you can't get along with people in your family. <laughs> but church is a good place to go pray about that. 
But church should be a friendly place. It should be somewhere when you walk in, people greet you, they come to you, hey, we miss you, hey, how you doing? So, so, you know, it should be friendly. The floor should be clean. Thank you, Brother Otto. The drum player must be on point. Thank you, Mr. Drum Player. Are we here this morning? Everything should be dressed right dressed because the Bible says let everything be done decently and in order. I mean, anyway, let's go. People notice excellence. Not only will God bless excellence, but people will notice. People today are used to excellence in everything from a restaurant to a department store. Everything you go, you want to, be, you want, you want to find excellence in everything. Now, when we when we have a, uh, how can I say it? No, matter of fact, when you go to uh, uh, a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving dinner, you know, you, you go in there because you, you think the food is going to be good. You know, I know, <laughs> I know if I go there, you know, like we have, like we have some events here and Sister Pat, she used to make some uh, peach cobbler, some uh, baked um, macaroni and cheese. I'm like, we know if Pat makes that, it's going to be good. Everybody waiting for Pat to make her peach cobbler. Where the peach cobbler? Where the macaroni and cheese? They all waiting for Pat to put that big dish down there. But if something's not good, you know, I saw a picture the other day. I saw a picture the other day. With, they said, this is how you uh, get rid of food that um, somebody cooked that you don't, you know, that you didn't like. And they had a paper plate that was upside down in the, in the, um, Trash can. It's like, but we want the best. We want to. We want to eat the best food. You know, so to speak. When somebody cooks something, and when people cook things in the church, you know, the brother the other day he's like, man, they put their foot in it. They want to eat the, some good tasting food. You know, because they feel like, hey, that's excellent. This made with quote unquote love, love, and excellence. I didn't put it down here tonight, this morning. Excellence is part of being loving. Hello? We want people to know that when they come to worship God, that they will find excellence in the worship here. Okay? God demands excellence from all of us, even the pastor. Okay? People want excellence. They want to know that the restaurant, the airline, or church that they're going to is run by people who care. By people who care. You think that you don't care, put down here. They don't want to buy what you're selling. Okay? We're not selling anything here, but we're trying to lead people to Christ. And I put down there, we want them to come worship with us in spirit and in truth. And we want to do it in the most excellent way that we can. This is not a show. Hello? This is not a show. If we look like we don't care about what we're doing, why would they care to worship with us or be a part of our church family? Hello? In Romans chapter 8, verse 37, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We can all be the best that we can be through Jesus Christ. Okay? The writer said, more than conquerors through him that loved us. Christ loves us, and through his love, we can be excellent in all that we do for him. In everything. Everything that we do for the Lord should be of an excellent nature. Hello? Well, preacher, you're saying I'm not excellent? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that to anyone here, okay? We all, we all, me included, can be better. Have you ever watched The Six Million Dollar Man? What's that? <laughs> it tells your age. It was an astronaut that uh, had, had an accident and they were, were going to rebuild him better. So they put some, some legs on him that were kind of strong bionic legs and I believe he had an arm or whatever this and that that was strong 
and he had a bionic eye. Remember those, those, uh, that's what it sounded in the movie. When he looked far off. They made him better. He said, we can build him better. And then they did a sequel off of that with the bionic woman. All I'm saying is, they wanted them to be the best. They didn't just let them die off, and that's the same thing with Jesus Christ. He didn't just push us to the side. But he said, hey, they're worth it. I'm going to make them the best. We can rebuild them. <laughs> so how, did God, how does the Lord rebuild us? He rebuilds us through our character. From the inside out. The bionic man and woman, they built everything that was on the outside. But Lord, the Lord rebuilds each one of us from the inside. We can have that on the outside when um, uh, the things that's going on the outside, we may smile, we may do everything, we may say with our lips and whatever, but the Lord builds us from the inside. He builds that character. Character is what you are when no one else is looking. He builds all these things. And how does he do it? He takes us through some things that we got to go through. We got to make some decisions to be closer to him. And in all these things that we go through, we just can't give him. There you go, Lord. Yeah, you, 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 you blessed me with a brand new car. Uh, you blessed me. Yeah, you had to pay for it. But ping, here you go. Thank you. I can stand here and just share um, about things that the Lord has given us, just, just, just given us, and just cry, just cry about um, God just doing that. But it wasn't because I was just any old type of way. Hello. It's because that the Lord is He's a good God, and we give Him each one of us, me included, constantly, daily excellence. Regardless of how we feel. We were here Thursday evening and I shared, do you feel God? I said, I don't feel God. But we don't go by feelings. We walk by faith and not by sight. We're all here this morning because we didn't go by feelings. We may be hurting this morning. A car, somebody called me this morning. A car may not have started this morning, but we're here. We made it happen. And the Lord's people, all of us, we make it happen happen we put him first and when we find out when we put him first we find out that hey he puts us first he gives us the desire of our heart we may think that oh you know I don't know why it's not working out have you given him your best excellence only you only you you you're the only one that can look deep down inside Consider your ways and begin to examine yourself. Only you can ask that. Not the pastor. I don't know what you're going through. Only you can be honest with yourself. The Bible says know the truth and the truth will make you free. Not only make you free, but it'll set you free also. Only you know this. Only you can be truthful with yourself. Consider the word of God. Consider these scriptures that were shared this morning. Let's attempt this week to be all that we can be for the Lord. Excellent. First rate. Finest. Extremely good. Exceptional. Hello? You know, we... I'm closing. He deserves our best. You know, sometimes we, um, you know, we, are, we want to look our best. Hello? We won't look our best. You know, it's been shared that um, first impressions are lasting. And people judge you by the way you speak. You know. Hello? Um, really, preacher? Yeah. I went to a uh, auto zone the other day and I had a, a white shirt and tie on. And I asked the guy, hey, you mind if I um I had some oil on my do you mind if I wash my hands? And he let me come to the back and wash my hands. Now, if I was a mechanic, came in there with some with a work clothes on, and said, "Hey, could you wash my out?" Oh, no, hey, man, we, you can't use our bathroom. So why is that? Because people judge you by the way you look. 
They also judge you by the way you speak. So if we, in other words, we have to be excellent in everything that we do. Not for others' sake. Because if you're reaching, if you're trying to impress other people, I'm trying to impress the Lord. I'm trying to be exceptional before him. Because as I said before, if you're exceptional before him, men and women will be drawn. Hey, why is that individual different? Because they're trying to be the best person that they can be. Remember, excellence from the inside. We can have all the muscles that we get. You know, but muscles, <laughs> we may go to the gym every day. Nothing wrong with that. When we get a little bit older, let me tell you, I'm 50, I'm almost going through it to 60. When you get older, those muscles be like, clunk. they don't last too long. Got to have more than that. That's why the Lord is dealing with all of our hearts at a young age. Maybe young people may say, well, you know, I got time. When I was young, I thought I had time. When I was 20, I said, man, when I get 30, I'm going to be old. When I got 30, I said, man, when I get 40, I'm going to be old. When I got 40, I said, man, 50 years old, boy, I know I'm going to be in. Now I'm saying when 60 comes, I ain't even saying that because when 60 comes, I'm still going <laughs> still gonna to be kind of young. <laughs> I said, There's some 60-year-old people in there, but praise God. Um, I'm, I'm going towards 60, so I know that when I turn 60, I'm still going to be young. Your attitude constitutes your attitude altitude did you know that if your attitude now I'm all I'm off I'm off of this message put it down if your attitude is all messed up you ain't going up you're gonna either go be in the same place or you're gonna go even lower we're not shooting for the stars we're shooting higher than the stars because if you shoot higher than the, the stars you shoot higher than that you may reach the stars, but we're reaching higher and higher and higher. We're going to higher ground in God. And what the Lord does in our, each one of our lives, he moves and deals with our character every single day. And how does he do that? It brings problems to your life. Things come into your life. You see how you deal with that. Will you be excellent about it? How will you deal with it? Will you go to him about it? The Bible does say that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord because our God is excellent this morning. And that's all he's trying to to get us to be. He wants and he deals with our hearts to get us to be more like his son Jesus. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. When somebody asks me how I'm doing, I say I'm excellent. Why is that? Because he's excellent. I may not feel it in my heart. I may not feel it in my body, but I'm still excellent. Yes. I'm still excellent. I have to tuck tail. I don't have to tuck tail to my feelings. But I have to put them to the, to the side and begin to speak the word of God. I made more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I could do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Said he died for me. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But he said, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. Abundant joy, abundant peace. Deep down inside. That's what I want from him. I can't get it in the world. Can't get it on a job. Can't get it with my spouse or, my, or, or anyone else. My mom, my dad, my grandmother, my grandfather. But I can get it from Jesus. I can get it from him. When I call upon him, he's there. He's never, he never sleeps nor slumbers. But he's always awake. He's always a, a dead Johnny on the spot. He's here this morning. He's not looking down. He's here in this service. He said, well, where is he at preacher? I don't see him. He's here by his Holy Spirit. Walking the pews in this place. 
moving and moving and brooding in the lives of, of the spirit of, of those of the souls that he's created. He cares for each one of us. And he always, always, how you know, preacher? He said, I'll always be with you. When you came here this morning, he was with you. When you sat down, he was with you. And you're sitting there this morning uh, looking at me or even praying. He's with you. Why is he with me? Because he cares for you. And he wants to, to cast your care upon him. For he careth for you. That's all he wants to do. Let's all pray this morning. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes in reverence to the Lord this morning. Read these last scripture this morning. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Do everything that you do for the Lord heartily. Do it exceptional. Everything that you do, do it as unto the Lord and not unto men. For the Lord sees and he knows. He knows. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning for your love and your concern. For all your people that's here under the sound of my voice. God, I was not lengthy this morning, but I shared what you wanted me to share. I did exactly what you wanted me to do. I was not afraid this morning. Lord, I ask this morning that you do that which I can't do. And that is to draw your people to a closer walk with you. Help them, guide them, order their steps, lead them, let them know of a true that you are still the God that answers by prayer. No man, no woman, no preacher, no bishop, no pastor can do that which you can do this morning. Only you, Lord, can deliver. Only you, God, can defeat. Only you, Lord, can give the victory. But there is no victory to be found. Move in a mighty way, Lord, upon your people this morning. The altars are open this morning. If you desire prayer, why don't you come forward this morning? Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed this morning. You're in the Father's house. Come on. Don't be afraid. Come on. Come on. There's those that's coming right now. Come on. He needs you this morning. Why is that? Because he wants to partner with you this morning the God of heaven needs you and why is that preacher because you are his hands you are his feet you are his mouthpiece you are the one that he's called out from among this world and he separates those uh, for his good pleasure not everyone will answer the call of God answer that call this morning come on come on don't be afraid this morning there are those that are standing at this altar this morning. You're standing at this altar. Why don't you do, why don't you do yourself justice this morning? Why don't you step up your hands this morning? Don't be ashamed this morning. Don't be afraid. The kid who's looking at you this morning. And just slip up your hands this morning. Both of them this morning. And won't you pray? God, Lord have mercy upon me this morning. God, look upon my life this morning. Help me this morning, God, to be what you want me to be. Help me, God, to be excellent. Help me, God, Lord, to be exceptional in your eyes. Only you can do that, God. Lord, I know without you, I am nothing. But with you, Lord, God, I thank you this morning. With you, I can do all things. With you, Lord, that, God, all things are possible to them that believe this morning I pray God that Lord that you would help each one here God to look to you this morning help them God not only to stand here at this altar but to seek your face seek you this morning God Lord if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray seek your face and turn from their wicked ways so, Lord, I'll hear from heaven. I will heal their land. 
God, heal our land this morning. Heal the land of our heart. Heal the land of our lives. Help us, Lord, to be more like you this morning. All that I, Lord, in my heart, Lord, I give to you this morning. I kick open all the doors of my heart, of my life, to you this morning, Lord. I stand in your presence this morning. I help. I need your help this morning, Lord. Help each one that's here, God. They that call upon your holy name shall be saved this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank him this morning, saints. Thank him this morning. Just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my petition this morning. Lord, I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment, God, that my eyes a fluttering God Lord have your holy way in me no music sister have you given him your heart this morning have you given him your soul only he can help us Jesus and Jesus alone thank you Jesus is only by your power by your love and your concern for each one of us that we stand Lord in your presence this morning by your grace and mercy lead me guide me order my steps the word is a lamp unto my feet thank you Jesus for your mercy that you've given us this morning let us not leave here the same way that we came in. Let us, Lord, worship your holy name this morning. Have your holy way in me this morning, Lord. Let's all bow our heads this morning and close our eyes in reference to him this morning. Heavenly Father, we've come before you this morning, God. Lord, we humbled ourselves before you this morning. Regardless of who was looking, God, I ask this morning, Lord, that you continue to answer each and every prayer, every petition. Lord, you see every problem, every circumstance. Lord, the things that people are going through this morning, God, help them, Lord. Let them know of a truth that you've not left them, that you will always be with them, even until the end of the world. And help them to know, God, that there are those that are here that have the same heart that you have. Those that care for souls. Those that care for individuals. Help us, Lord, all of us, as a congregation of people, to reach out to each one that's here. Lord, if you've laid someone on our hearts to pray for, help us to pray for them, to call them out by name. If we have their number, Lord, help us, Lord, to text them. Let them know that someone is thinking about them. Help us, Lord. As a family of God, as a congregation, keep us safe. Keep us close. Protect us. Bring us back. Allow us to be more like you in the days to come. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. amen. And amen. God bless you is our prayer. Remember. There is no service tonight. See you back here Tuesday evening. God bless you.